It's hearing from hundreds of women today, including one from North Texas, who say that their breast implants made them pretty sick. Tonight, survivors of breast implant associated lymphoma say their numbers are growing. We have women in the ADA has been investigating several women. I asked my classmates in the army, they explained how worse they are. They didn't talk about how it can attack your how your body sees it as a foreign object and it, it will flare up autoimmune issues. Um, the shell of all implants are still made of silicone. The silicone shell is made up of 40 different chemicals and it's sitting right there on your, your chest, in your lungs, um, near your brain. Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Let's Talk Breast Health. We are coming to you live from the World's Playground in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Talia Maddock, and I'm also a breast implant illness survivor. I had breast implants for 10 years. Shortly after getting my implants, I began getting sick um, with things like asthma, shortness of breath. Month after month, symptom after symptom began to appear until soon I was in a rapid decline of my health. I searched for answers and found none. I went to providers, specialists, no one had an answer for me. I was meant to feel crazy, like this was being made up or in my head. One day I went to the salon to get my hair done and my good friend Sarah told me about a group called Healing Breast Implant Illness by Nicole. I joined that group quickly. It was the first time I heard of the term breast implant illness, but I quickly found a community of women, thousands of women, almost 70,000 women who were telling my story. I found myself in those women. I saw myself in them. And for the first time I had hope. For the first time I thought I would be able to beat this and had an answer. So during that time, um, I began researching explanting. I quickly scheduled a procedure to explant and remove my implants. And shortly after, almost the same day, most of my symptoms disappeared. Um, I regained my health now. And during this journey, I have met hundreds of women and heard thousands of stories of women that were just like me, some a little different, but we all have two things in common. During our journey and our illness, we were scared, we felt hopeless, we felt alone. These communities of women and support groups on Facebook are integral to saving women's lives, to giving them hope, and to leading them to places where there's information where they can do their own research and find answers. Which leads me to our story today of a beautiful woman named Rachel Robart. She is a mom of four beautiful kids, a wife, she's a fitness coach, She's in, she was into fitness and competition and coaching women on how to win these competitions. Um, but one thing was missing, she felt, from feeling perfect, from giving her that competitive edge. And she decided to make some changes in her life to her physical appearance by getting breast implants. And so we're going to show her story now, and uh, we just can't wait to, sh to show you Rachel's story and what she's doing now with her pain and her journey by creating this amazing group for her friends or for women here in Nevada to have a, a place to go for answers and support. And the name of her group is Healing Breast Implant by, Ray, sorry, excuse me, Healing Breast Implant Illness Nevada by Rachel Robart. So let's take a look at Rachel's story. Um, just women looking for answers. And it is Las Vegas, and let's just put it out there, it's the industry, I mean, entertainment capital of the world, right? And there are strip clubs everywhere, and there are a lot of women here, yes, that have implants, and they're, they're searching for answers and coming into this group so fast. And the community that we're creating in there and these, this bond is not like anything out there. They come in and they feel safe. They feel like they have somewhere to, to turn, and we're walking them through their first steps. We're, we're showing them you know, how to go through the list of doctors, make sure that you're interviewing them all, um, how to detox after, just, just all of it. My name is Rachel Robart. I am a mom of four. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, my husband and I are realtors here for Keller Williams. Uh, we've been here about 18 years. Well, I'd always had a passion for fitness, so as soon as I graduated high school, I actually got certified to become a personal trainer. And that led me into the fitness industry, and I started helping women um, do their first uh, bikini competitions and physique pageants and 
that kind of led into um, me uh, getting breast implants. Um, it was a, a bit of both. I was training uh, the new girls to run their first bikini competitions, and it was always like the talk in the back room of, oh, I'm, you know, I'm small up top. Is this going to affect, you know, the place, which, which place I come out? And for the majority of the girls, it was a lot of, you know, self-conscious reasons, and my closest friends um, wanted to do some of the competitions as well and thought, hey, this could be our next step. This could help us, you know, start placing first in the competition. So I decided to go on board with that. Well, I was 22 at the time. I specifically remember because I was waiting. I think you had to be 21 to get implants <laughs> legally. Um, and 22 hit, and that's when I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get this done. So my girlfriends and I, there was five of us that went down together and supported each other. And um, the doctor said nothing about anything, really. Um, I was nervous, like, again, again um, I was young. And I remember sitting there kind of contemplating the moment, and they give you this little tab under your tongue to kind of numb you, and that was the last thing I remember. I was excited about it. I did no research on it. I was young. I thought, hey, this is going to help, um, so I'm in. Let's just, let's just jump on board with this. Not doing any research, knowing nothing about breast implants themselves. Knowing not that there was different types either. Um, my girlfriends did some research um, and I followed along with them. So that's, they kind of led me into what we were gonna do at the time. It was the talk. They, they wanted to place first in these competitions and they thought if I get these implants, I'm going to place first, and that was the majority of the women, why they were saying yes to this and why they decided to jump on board with it. Mentor saline. So I didn't, I didn't choose which implants I was, I, all I knew was that there was silicone and saline, and I knew from what I heard that saline was safer than silicone, so I went with saline. Yes, surgery was great. Um, I started jumping right into my competitions, started placing first place in almost all of them. Um, and that first three years was great. Um, no problems. Just doing my bikini competitions. And uh, then I met my husband and got pregnant with our first child and uh, started noticing complications and I thought that it had to do with um, being pregnant um, and uh, the, the, the after effect of being pregnant postpartum I was thinking it was all these different things and I started noticing that one of the first signs is that my, my hair was falling out and never thought once that it was my implants. Um, fast forward down the road I have baby number two and um, just difficulties breastfeeding. All of a sudden, I mean, it was my, my chest, my breasts were like rocks. And I developed um, an infection called mastitis on my left breast and never once again thought that it could have been my implants causing this infection. And I thought that it had to do with, you know, postpartum pregnancy and the hormones and all that crazy stuff that happens when you're pregnant. So I kind of ignored the signs. Um, and then I had the last three of my children kind of back to back. And again, I started um, just kind of ignoring the signs, thinking that, oh, this is related to being pregnant and this is related to all the hormones because I've been pregnant for so many years back to back. I, I specifically remember driving home one day and I just got off the freeway and I started to feel like I was having, and I'm, all my kids are in the car. And I feel like I'm starting to have this panic attack. My, my chest kind of locked up, and I pulled off the side of the road. I literally put my hands in my lap, and I just started crying, thinking, something is wrong with me. Like, I don't feel right. Um, I remember going home that day and telling my husband, I, this, this, isn't, this isn't me. There's absolutely something wrong with me. Still not knowing 
about breast implant illness. Um, I started putting my story out there on Facebook and a girlfriend of mine sent me a message and she said, hey, you need to check out this group called Breast Implant Illness by Nicole. And I landed in that group and the moment I landed in that group, I knew that that's what it was. I was reading everybody's stories, I was watching all these women's videos, and I just saw myself in every single one of them, and I kicked myself in the butt because never once did I think that all of this was related to my implants. And I'm so thankful she sent me to that group. <laughs> Um, I was in the group for about a good six months because I was still in disbelief. And I didn't know where to start. I didn't know who to, which doctors to reach out to. I originally thought that I needed to find the surgeon that originally put my implants in. And when I looked him up, they said that he had committed suicide here in Las Vegas. So that terrified me. So I didn't really know where to turn. Um, and some of my girlfriends started giving me doctors that friends had been referring. And I interviewed about seven doctors here in Vegas, and one of them, I won't name names, <laughs> um, said that he wanted to just deflate the implants and, and leave them in my body. And I immediately went to, back to Nicole's group, and I said, hey, this is, you know, this is what this doctor's telling me. And they're like, no, absolutely not. You, that's the, the worst thing that you could do. So at that point... I, I knew that this was going to be a little bit harder than I even intended to, to be because I knew I'd have to do some more research on doctors and really find one that was going to do the surgery right. Um, and that's when I found Dr. Parker. So, uh, a lot of them, a good handful, uh, kind of pushed more towards uh, you just want to fill up your bags and go bigger. Uh, you want to get a new set of implants. Um, uh, they wanted to deflate them while they were in you still. They're, they were giving you all these different options, never let's take them out and, and heal your body, basically. Like, they, they, they weren't, they didn't know what breast implant illness was, the majority of them. So, and it was hard because, you know, they, they make you feel like you're crazy when you tell them all these symptoms that's happening. And that was hard. And it was hard to keep interviewing doctors when each doctor kind of looks at you thinking, you know, you're crazy. You're, you're making this all up, you know. So when I found Dr. Parker, it was just, you could tell that he was genuine. And never once did he bring up, you have to get a lift or you have to do this. It was, we want to heal you. And this is what we're going to do. It was more focused on my health than anything. This wasn't for cosmetic reasons anymore. This was basically to save my life. Yes, so after the first one, um, when the, Nicole's group told me to basically run because he wanted to deflate my bags, I, they said to start bringing in a list of the symptoms and anything that you can share to educate the doctors on what this is. And about the third doctor, I could tell that they kind of started to, to hear my story but still were in disbelief. Um, so it just, it, it made it harder to keep coming in and interviewing doctors and bringing them this list, trying to con basically convince them that I know that I'm sick when I've lived with these implants for 18 years of my life, that this, it has to be the solution. Um, it was hard to keep interviewing. Um, my husband, well, I'll talk about my husband. <laughs> he, uh, I don't think he believed it either in the beginning. He's, I said, you know, I... I'm pretty confident that this is it. I had taken a, um, a it's called a panel 19 test where it tests for uh, silicone sensitivities in your body. And I came out positive for almost all of the tests that it came out with. And I showed him that and that was the, okay, this, is, this has gotta be it then. And so my husband in the beginning um, was a little not, I don't think he, I don't know how to, how to word that really. <laughs> I think he was more scared than anything is really what it was, what it came down to. He was nervous how I was going to come out of this whole thing um, 
not so much physically, but mentally. Where was my mental state going to be after, because I've lived with implants for 18 years of my life. Um, but you can ask him now. He's a firm believer. <laughs> you know, a year, I've, it's been a year and four months since I've explanted, and he tells me all the time just how different I am and how much energy I have around the house and how thankful he is that he has his wife back. And I... I have four children, and I got to a point where I felt like I literally could not get out of bed in the morning. And I was in so much pain that I would take a bath every night just to like alleviate the pain in my body. Um, it was just, I felt like I was coming to, like, my, like I was dying, but dying fast, and I'm only 40 years old. I feel like it took a lot of my life too fast. And it was just difficult getting out of bed and, and being present with my kids because I didn't have the energy. And going through life and not being able to breathe and having, you know, just these this overwhelming feeling on your chest and your, your throat's constantly dry, it's just... It's scary. Um, you, I, like I, I would say, if I put it into words, literally, you're, like, you're just trying to breathe in life, and you can't breathe, and that's scary. <laughs> yes, alone is the perfect word for it. When nobody understands what you're going through, when you literally feel like you're dying, and you're trapped in your own body. There's no one to talk to, you know. And, and like I said, I, you know, I would have these nights with my husband where I'm trying to figure out all the answers. I've done all these different tests. I checked my thyroid. I checked um, the, the panel 19 test. All these different tests kept coming out positive for different things, but still not relating that to my implants. You just feel alone. And again, talking to the doctors and having to basically educate them on what this all is was difficult. Honestly, the moment I landed in that group, I was just overwhelmed. I, I became almost addicted to the group for like the first six weeks. I was just scrolling and scrolling late at night when I lay in bed and just looking for answers and relating to all the women's stories and watching their videos, like literally binge watching their videos. Um, and the more and more I watched, the more confident I was to make my own decision because uh, I just knew. I, I felt it in my gut. I knew this, that this had to be the answer. Absolutely, absolutely. They feel immediately connected because we're in Nevada, or you know. And I also have a lot of women coming from Reno area because I have it as the the uh, breast implant analyst of Nevada, not just Las Vegas. So we have women coming from Reno, Tahoe area as well. Um, but they immediately feel connected because we're all kind of just from the same area. I started it as soon as I found Nicole's group. Because uh, the, the community in that group and all these women's stories, I knew that Vegas needed something. I knew, and I knew because there are thousands, I think there's almost 80,000 women in Nicole's group now, maybe even more. I knew that we needed something smaller for our own community to where people didn't feel like they were just another number landing in this group. Um, and we could help w women on a higher level if we kept it more of a tight community. So um, I created the Las Vegas, the one for Las Vegas, and I was just telling Talia again that the women are coming in there at such a rapid pace just for Las Vegas alone. Uh, it helps so many women. I really do. I think the more and more we keep putting this out there, um, the bigger our army gets. I don't, why wouldn't people or companies want to fund this? I mean, there are women and moms and, you know, they have children. They need their lives back. I, I don't see why we couldn't help more. Yes, I just created um, an event page for the group. And once a month, we're going to be connected.
continuing to get together and lock arms and and make awareness uh, bigger in Las Vegas. Um, but the immediate um, meeting person to person, I am so excited about because I've been following all these women's stories for a year now. We've all been putting ourselves out there and crying in this in this group, and to get to meet them today, I can't. It's I'm excited <laughs> to meet them in person. Um, breast Implant Illness Nevada, and then Breast Implant Illness Las Vegas. And they can find me on my Facebook page because I have all the information there at Rachel Robart. If you're out there and you're experiencing any of the symptoms that we've talked about, um, please feel free to add yourself to our group. Um, you can start, um, you know, your own research. Just Google breast implant illness and there's a, a bunch of things that pop up now and I feel like more and more information is getting put out there. As you guys can see, Rachel's story is incredible. She's an inspiration and she's taken her story and her journey and using it to help hundreds of women, thousands of women. The thing that stood out to me with Rachel's story is her, for all of us women, the community, joining these groups to find your community, your army of women who can relate to you, who want to advocate for other women who still don't know why they're sick, why they don't feel well. So Rachel has taken this and it's her passion now to help women. Um, she's part of these groups online. Again, her group is uh, Breast Implant Illness of Nevada by Rachel Robart. Um, the group that saved many women, including myself, is Healing Breast Implant Illness by Nicole. Um, so the point of this is to let women know if you're watching or family members of women who have been sick and they quite can't figure out what's going on, send them to this group so they can do their own research, so they can find a group of women in a community where there's information and resources and women and, that will understand them. So I just wanted to encourage you, if you know someone, to share this episode, to share it to your wall, even if you don't. So in case someone is watching and um, they have questions, that's how it happens. Um, the person who shared with me um, shared and opened up and was vulnerable, and she had no idea that it saved my life. And that's how it happens. And I, I don't mean to sound dramatic, but for 10 years, it just escalated to the point that by the year 10, I felt like I was dying and I had no hope. And that's just what I hear from these women often is they've lost hope and they feel crazy. So what Rachel is doing after she explanted is she's using her pain and her journey and what she's learned to build a community here locally in Las Vegas, Nevada. I mean, come on guys, Las Vegas, Nevada of all places, this is where we kicked off our series uh, because it's happening everywhere. So I want to thank you guys for joining us for episode two of Let's Talk Breast Health. We encourage you to please uh, share this to your wall just in case someone needs to hear it. Um, and then, of course, if you're in Nevada and you're looking for a local group of women and a community of support, uh, please check out uh, Rachel's group. And then, of course, the larger group on, I'm sorry, on Facebook, uh, Breast and Pilling Breast Implant Illness by Nicole. Just thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in two weeks when we bring you another story from a woman who um, survived breast implant illness.